Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your tarot reading. Um, so, I'm doing the videos out of order. Usually I start with um, Capricorn and go through all the signs, ending with Sagittarius. Um, but I feel like for this month, um, I feel like you might have some important messages because that was coming through for Sagittarius and I did their, um, their video and a lot of messages came out. So I feel like you have something that is important trying to break out as well okay so i'm going to start with your video um i hope that you get this video in time um i'm publishing it you know the middle of october so hopefully you will have a little bit more guidance as we head into the month of november this reading is for november 2019 and so hopefully you can stay abreast and be ahead of the game when um you know if, if these messages resonate with you okay what is really interesting is um, I'm seeing like uh, I'm hearing the words change in vessel okay and as soon as that word uh, or that phrase came out I was taken back to last month's reading where you were that cactus in the pot I think it was for you guys and for the month of October I'm seeing a continuation in that imagery because I feel like somebody is taking notice that the the plant the cactus is getting too big for the pot the pot is not giving it enough room and it's you know um wilting as a result of being in a space that is not able to accommodate its growth right and so i feel like somebody is repotting the plant um repotting like putting that um that cactus in a bigger pot and then it has room to grow and putting it you know on a table again and so the cactus is very happy okay so that that's the first thing i'm seeing and um the message associated with that is definitely a change in vessel okay a change in the body a change in the environment a change that can be very momentous because it's allowing for like a breath of fresh air to kind of just just you know whoosh through and so I feel like there has been some much needed change in your physical environment. And I feel almost like there might have been um, kind of like the, the guiding hand, the invisible hand working behind the scenes. There might have been, you know, like some type of a spiritual um, push, okay, for some major changes to finally come into the picture for you. But then I'm also feeling as well, and I mentioned this in the last reading, that the, the cactus is on the table it's, and, you know, um, the person, who whoever is taking care of it, um, it was getting too big for the pot and it was not getting enough nutrients and it's slowly dying and the person thought that, oh no, the cactus needs more water. And so it gave the cactus water and then the water just never evaporated properly. It's, um, it stagnates in the soil and then the cactus began to rot. So this is a, a, a major change from last month's energy because I feel almost like somebody is taking notice of you, okay? And realizing that, you know what? The Virgo has outgrown their environment. They need a change of scenery. Let me give them something new to work on, okay? So I feel like somebody might be noticing, realizing your true capabilities and your true potential, and they're noticing you uh, for the very first time and acknowledging your contributions or acknowledging your capabilities. And so they realize that you're kind of like a big fish in a small pond. You're no longer challenge you're no longer growing you're no longer developing to your full capabilities and so they want to step in and kind of uh, switch things up uh, challenge you and you know not in a bad way but like give you more responsibilities give you more mentally stimulating projects uh, giving you an opportunity to shine okay but more than anything I feel like it's a transplant energy where you're no longer a big fish in a small pond. You're playing in the big big leagues now. You're among other fish. You're among other, like, uh, you're, you're among your peers who are on your wavelength or on your level. Okay, so we have like a very loaded, um, a lot of loaded messages and subtypes that came with that image. And I'm glad it's a continuation because last uh, month's reading I felt was really good. And so the change of vessel 
is what I'm coming in. And the two cards that came out with this message are definitely these two cards here. So let me just talk a little, well, three cards. Let me just talk about these things. So first of all, we have the death card. This is, you know, walking through the tunnel and emerging on the other side where there are, you know, the, the environment is just streaming with bright lights. It's just streaming with newness. It's streaming with just a lot of new opportunities, okay? Some of you might have just been, you know, walking through this dark tunnel and the, the, the main thing that you had to look forward to was, you know, leading you was that light at the end of the tunnel, okay? And I feel for many of you, this might have been, it, it's not so dark in this depiction. It's like you can still see your way, you know, you can, you, you still feel okay, you're still safe, you're in the, the confines of this tunnel. But the tunnel can feel a little bit claustrophobic and a little bit small and confining, right? So I feel like you were in an environment where it just felt a little bit stagnant. It felt a little bit dank and possibly damp and possibly kind of muggy. And, and you know, you like your cleanliness. You like to be able to see things. You like to have full visibility. You like to know what's in your environment. Many of you might be germaphobes, you know, and you're just a neat freak. And I feel like, you know, for a Virgo to be in a tunnel, it, it's just not a good environment. And so that's what it felt like. It felt almost very linear, very structured. You can only walk straight ahead or backwards. There wasn't enough room for experimentation. There wasn't enough room for, you know, um, uh, taking a detour. So the, the, the view, the sight, the the day-to-day -day routine was not overly inspiring. And you knew there's light at the end of the tunnel. You knew this is going to come to an end. And you knew this, this confining space that you've been in is going to open up and is, it's going to open up in a very tremendously amazing way because there's, you know, a lot more light, visibility, freedom, and just um, uh, room and space at the end of this tunnel. And you've been waiting for it and it's finally emerging for you, okay? And so this is a lot about, you know, the, the change in the environment, okay? And then with the change in the vessel, what I have here is the two cards that perfectly depicts this, um, that image that I saw earlier. We have here the Five of Cups. This is a situation where, you know, the traditional Rider Waite deck, the Five of Cups is missed opportunities, regrets, things that we should have done, um, but we, whatever, for whatever reason, allow time to pass us. Things that we should have said things that we should have invested our time in, things that we should have paid careful attention to. For whatever reason, it slipped under the radar. Uh, we say we're gonna get to it, we never did. And then the opportunity slips us by, okay? And this is also indicative of a situation where you know the, the cups have already run dry. It's an old stagnant energy, there's cracks in it. And it's also a situation where, you know, there's a lot of burden, okay? So the four saucers, the four, four teacups are kind of like stacked on top of this thing. And this thing is fractured. So it's sort of like carrying the weight of a situation. Virgo people are really big when it comes to responsibility and helping others, wanting to be of service to others. And I feel like... Um, in, in the, I, I guess like the, the, the recent year, okay, this could be like the past four years, the past five years, I feel almost like many of you have come into your own and uh, you're realizing as well that you're very capable, like um, you're, you're, you're more capable than the people that you work with, you're more capable than the supervisor, than the boss, than the people that you take orders from, you're definitely more reliable. And you're also realizing that, you know, I'm such a good worker. Why am I not getting rewarded? Why is more responsibility dumped on me? You know, I should be cherished for my ability to be responsible and get things done and to carry my weight. Why is it that when I do more, I'm given more work, more tasks, more responsibilities? Why aren't other people held accountable for the things that they do? Why am I carrying the burden? Why am I, um, you know, the workhorse? Why 
am I carrying the weight of this situation, this environment? And you know, in the past, okay, and especially for some of you who are young, um, and and from young, I mean, you know, just like you're you're starting to come into your own, you're starting to learn about yourself, and you know, age is all relative. So I feel like you know when people um, give you responsibility, give you greater responsibility, or give you tasks, it makes you happy because it keeps you busy, right? And then you also feel like, oh, they're noticing me. They're noticing my potential. They're noticing my capabilities. They're noticing how good of a worker I am. That's why they're giving me responsibility. And in a way, it's sort of like it's flattering. But then over time, you feel like you're working faster than everybody else, and so you're given twice the work. It's not fair. And many of you are coming to the realization that. This is not. I'm enabling a situation. I need to speak up for myself. I need to not, you know, carry the burden anymore. And people need to stop、um, forcing the responsibilities on me just because I'm capable. If I'm not there, what's going to happen? Who's going to carry the burden? How is that place going to survive? And I feel almost like. You come into a place where you are practicing loving detachment. Okay, no longer wanting to be mother hen. You know, making sure everything runs smoothly. You're starting to detach yourself because you're realizing that you're subsidizing a situation. You're enabling a situation to to continue to be unfair. And so there's definitely a change in the guards, a change in the times, a change in your perspective, a major, major paradigm shift when it comes to what you're willing or not willing to、um, kind of take on. Okay, you're in a position where you are picky, and that's great. Picky about what you are willing to do, what you're not. You're picky about, you know,、um, what projects to take on and what projects to leave behind, who to work with and who not to work with, and you're you're coming into that sense of discernment. No longer, you know, wanting to please everybody. You're in a very good position where you have, you know, good bargaining power and you're able to kind of like dictate the rules of the game. Okay, and this came about through this sense of like. We're coming here from the Five of Cups. So, if you can just imagine, if these were cups, right, that were full, but they're all cracked, they're all cracked, so they're not able to hold water, to hold their own weight, right? And so, we're changing the vessel. We're pouring everything that it was used to be held within these broken containers or cups, and we're switching the the vessel. We're pouring it into here, and so I feel like you you are redirecting your energy. Away from this mess, away from this situation that is very burdensome and very tiring and、uh, very unfair and unbalanced. You're redirecting your precious stream of gold here. Okay, falling into this cup is wonderful because this is about self-love, self-care. This is definitely as well about you know putting yourself first, doing things that make you happy rather than accommodating everybody else. And Virgo, it's okay to be selfish. You've spent your whole life working for other people. It's time to draw back your energy and take care of yourself and do things that you love.、Um, you know, work might be hectic, and if you're just like, I don't want to go to work today. I'd rather go have a picnic. I'd rather go hiking. I'd rather go watch a movie.、Um, you know, the work is still going to be there when you get back, right? So take that day off. Do that mental health day, or you know, do whatever it is that you you feel like. Your soul and your body needs because you deserve it. So I definitely see here a redirecting in your energy, a refilling or a changing of a vessel,、uh, a changing in the way that you do things, a changing in the way in which you preserve and and conserve your energy for things that really matter, that are important to you. And I feel like many of you are coming into your own, learning to say no, learning to tell people to back off, learning to tell people to like. I want to say the energy is a little bit like no nonsense. Okay, it's almost like the Queen of Swords. It's sort of like no, you can do it yourself. You know, I can help you, but you can do it yourself as well. So I feel like you're giving people a piece of their mind because 
you're you were in a situation where it wasn't fair okay um so there is a second message i'm gonna get to it really really fast and the second message is very cute i i really like it okay so um the second message is um i see this little boy okay he's um he's got like um he's got like a pet cat or something next to him and he's just kind of skipping with his cat um he, he looks like he's about five or six, so a very young boy. It's very cartoony. So there, he's just running, skipping on a dirt road. The cat is, you know, by his legs. And um, he's, he starts to hear like a, a dog whimpering or crying. So he walks towards, he, he tries to find like the source of the, where the, the, the noise is coming from, a crying dog. And then he goes towards this well and he realizes there's a dog stuck at the bottom of the well and the well is really deep okay so there's no pail there's no you know the the drawstrings where you drop the water it's not there so it's not like and he there's no there's no water in the well so he can't really he can't really um jump in and, and save the dog and even if he were to jump in He's gonna be stuck so he's just trying to think you know how to get the dog out of there and i guess like you know this is a make-believe world so there's no adults nearby that he can come to and ask for help there's no firemen there's no animal control right so it's just him the cat and the the, the dog stuck in the well and then you kind of see him um this light bulb comes over his head so he has an idea and then he um and then he like runs off out of frame and then he comes back with like a hot air book like with a, a balloon okay and he like ties a rock to the balloon he tosses it down and then i don't know how i didn't see it when he tossed tossed the balloon down to the well the dog bites the balloon the rock comes off and then the the balloon magically lifts this dog out of this well Okay, so like it's not supposed to make sense. It is very cartoony. I don't know how the rock fell off. I don't know how the dog is able to grab onto the, the, the single balloon string. And I don't even know how that one helium balloon is able to lift a dog. Okay, so it, it's not supposed to make sense. But it worked. Okay, so I almost feel like there's a sense of magic and, and, and there's a sense of like... Let's do it and, and wish for the best and hope for the best. And once you have that sense of childlike wonder and amazement and, you know, creativity and, and thinking like a child where everything is magical, uh, where the, the laws of physics and the laws of the real world don't apply. Once we start to train our mind to think in that way where the possibilities are endless, we start to see a lot of magical things happen. We start to see a lot of problems resolve on their own. And we start to see that whatever we have boxed ourselves into, whatever, you know, self-sabotaging thoughts or, um, or like, you know, things we tell ourselves, oh, it's not going to work because it defies logic. Or it's not going to work because I don't know how it's physically possible. Once we let go of those thoughts that really hold us back, we can implement a lot of good changes we can solve a lot of problems and i feel like we can you know make great 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 strides because we're letting go of the self-limiting belief okay so this is a, a month where uh, i feel like the universe is really urging you to kind of like um shut down that adult brain okay stop thinking about like the negatives stop, stop dwelling on the negatives stop dwelling on the problems and and think a little bit more outside the box think a little bit more like like a child where the world is full of possibilities the possibilities are endless the child does not know the the constraints of the real world or the physical world the child does not know limitations okay and so once you start to do that, you're going to realize that, you know, dreams can happen overnight. You're going to realize that, you know, um, you will be able to make magic happen. 
by letting go of those self-limiting beliefs, okay? And the card to me that really indicates this and, and the two cards that jumped out when this imagery came out was um, this, well, I guess three. Okay, so this is um, very Egyptian. Okay, so this is the moon and the moon is about psychic abilities, intuition. Um, it's also a state where I, I feel like for many of you, um, the moon deals with emotions and, 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 and the fluctuations of the emotions, right? So I feel like for many of you, you have mastered the emotion, okay? Not letting people guilt trip you, for example, okay? Understanding that when they're guilt tripping you, they're trying to make you, coerce you in a very manipulative way to do something that you might not want to do, okay? Not letting people sway you with their emotion either okay some people are that you have been dealing with I feel like um, they make bad decisions and then they come and cry to you about it and I feel really unfortunate it, I feel bad for those people but I feel like you're starting to kind of like you know this is like the crown chakra detaching ourselves from this a messy emotional space okay this is not to say like don't feel things this is not to say being so disconnected that we're not sympathetic this is more to say learning to compartmentalize learning to leave to check your emotions at the door learning not to let your emotional state cloud your judgment learning not to let your emotional reaction to a certain person um, kind of like bias the way in which you interact with them does that make sense so I feel like this is a mastery over the emotions and um, I'm getting somewhere with this because I feel like you know this this is a card that is very uh, Egyptian in its um, symbolism okay so we have here a god okay possibly the god of the moon god of intuition god of uh, secrecy and I feel like the way this card came out it's very powerful it's basically somebody who knows how to work with the elements it's somebody who knows and understands human nature and it's somebody who knows how to like you know harness the energy of the ties harness the energy when it comes to like divine timing in order to make dreams happen for many of you i definitely feel like you have some spiritual guidance helping you behind the scenes to push things uh, for you and I feel like this message is coming in to tell you that you know if you find yourself at the bottom of that dry well there's gonna be you know somebody coming in tossing you a balloon to lift you up okay so for those of you who have been um, if you have been dealing with depression if you have been dealing with a situation where you're just like when is it gonna end okay if you find yourself in a dank dark place and you're just like i need a helping hand it's going to come into the picture to rescue you okay so i do see a change in environment a change in the vessel and you're, the time is coming okay so we have a really powerful card here that indicates that and what else is coming through is this is the limitations okay this is the four of wands in the traditional rider weight deck it's um celebration family happy home but in this deck it is it, it is about restrictions restrictions that don't really have any bearing in the real world okay restrictions that we impose upon ourselves it's a situation where somebody hastily slapped something together and called it a day and then the person that comes in after them are just like oh this is the way it's been done in the past so let's do it in the future and they don't, didn't take the time to realize that this was very sloppily slapped together it doesn't really hold weight it doesn't really um, doesn't serve as awning or coverage for anybody from the elements right it was just not done very well and and yet they they're just like oh that's the way it was done in the past so that's the way we're doing it now um, not questioning what came before not questioning what needs to change taking and accepting the status quo and you know the the four energies deal with stability it's like the four legs of a table if the four legs of the table are of equal length the table doesn't wobble right so in a way it's very stable but it can be very very rigid so i feel like there's a situation here where you're kind of forced to 
um, uproot, okay, that, that cactus is coming back, uproot, transplant, fix, break out of the status quo, or like, um, you know, put yourself in a different situation, or like this environment is no longer serving you, so it's time for you to find something else that is a lot more stable, okay? So I feel here that imagery with the, you know, uh, divine sense of timing, and then also a helping hand um, to be able, like, that's going to be coming into the picture, okay? So you have some really strong spiritual guidance from behind the scenes, okay? The other thing that I'm sensing, so th those two images aside, I feel like they have uh, covered sufficiently the first row. And so we're talking about the second row now. This is your energy here, King of Pentacles, okay? You can be male or female, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is a card that spells to me raw power, okay? Elephants are uh, very, you know, regal creatures, okay? They uh, live into old age, they have a really long lifespan. I believe they also have the same gestation period as humans, if not a, like a month longer, so I, I don't remember if it's nine or ten months, but they have, or maybe it's more. Um, you know what, I'm a little bit curious, so give me just a moment, let me Google that. I'm sorry, give me just a moment, um, I need to know this. Okay, so 18 to 22 months. So the range is 18 to 22 months, okay, so that's like over a year. So I feel like that timing, 18 to 22 months, is very, very, very uh, important. So this card to me basically spells raw power, okay? This is somebody who's very stable on their own, okay? They're, um, they're like uh, firm-footed. They remember everything. They have a memory of an elephant. They're very, they, they don't forget. They, they know how to, you know, they always remember to like cross their uh, T's and dot their I's. Um, they do everything very, very diligently. And so I feel like this is a card. This might be your spirit animal. But what I feel is there's um, the third eye activated as well. Okay, this pentacle covering the third eye. And um, I feel like for many of you, you're at a point where you know how to make money. You might be swimming in money. You might like um, you might be able to like quickly scan out ideas or come up with things that can you know help you build a large empire to help you build resources or you have an eye for detail where you can scan your environment and know what is valuable or even like find resources in a space that is lacking in resources. Okay, so some of the jobs that came out. Um, with this card that might be suitable for you is especially like procurement, okay? If you're like uh, securing uh, services and goods for an organization, for a company, maybe even for the federal government, you know how to spot a good deal, okay? And then another thing that comes out is like an antique dealer being able to spot something of great value that other people overlook. But overall, this is just about, you know, um, being able to generate a lot of resources, being able to spot a good deal or being able to spot a good opportunity when it comes to income generation, okay? And I feel here we have the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Wands is, you know, a new project, something that really stirs our passion, something that really makes our soul sing and something that really makes us feel alive, okay? So if you've been kind of like fumbling around, walking through this tunnel, there's something that's really lit up at the end of it, okay, with this Ace of Wands. Um, it indicates to me major things happening as well in the springtime. It also indicates to me as well um, a lot like a new project that promises a lot of um, stability, okay? Um, I'm seeing for many of you, this is a revisiting because you know that elephant never forgets. Coming back to a situation that you thought might have been done with the Five of uh, Cups, okay? It might have been done and over with. 
Now, getting a flashback, getting a resurgence, getting a revival in that situation. Um, for many of you, this could be somebody finding their way to come back to you, okay? If there has been like a missed opportunity in the past, a work situation, a, a job, a person, a misconnection, I feel like you're not so much you, you're the elephant, so you're very solid and stable and, and you're staying put. But there's a situation where somebody is revived or a situation is revived and they're coming back into the picture. And when they're coming back, the passion comes back. The interest comes back and it's a mutual reception. Um, I feel like somebody is trying to reach out to you. For those of you who are dealing with like a romantic partner, this is you and this is them, okay? Page of Cups, wanting to make an offer wanting to um, check up on how you're doing, wanting to reach out and getting cold feet, okay? Look at how um, nervous and curious and nervous and uh, uncertain and, and kind of like unsure this person is. They're just like, I, I feel like somebody in your work environment might be admiring you from afar. And they're afraid to approach you because you've got a lot of plumage, okay? You've got a lot of, um, you've got a lot, like, you've got a lot of stature or you've got, like, a high ranking. They might be a subordinate or they might not be on your level and they're afraid. And then I also feel like there might have been a misconnection in the past and this person wants to make an offer but they're looking at you. And they're not really sure they have everything to give you or they have anything to give you. So I feel like there's a connection from coming back in from someone who's very shy. I also feel like, you know, it's uh, resting right underneath the Ace of Cups. So they have a lot of love for you. Um, you have a lot of passion for them. But, you know, it takes a Virgo a really long time to fall in love. Um, they can they can sustain a relationship without ever falling in love until they are 100% sure that that person is the one before they give their heart. And I, I, I know like a lot of signs don't do that. And I can't even fathom how a Virgo person does that, but that's what happens. And so, you know, you can be in a relationship with a Virgo for a really long time and they won't give their love, okay? Their, their heart is very sacred. And so I feel like there's a situation where you harbor a lot of passion for a person. They harbored a lot of love for you. And I, I feel like there, there might have been, there might have been misconnections. And I feel like there's a revival of the situation if you so choose, okay? I'm also sensing as well, um, they're really looking at you. They're going to reach out. They're going to communicate. We have here. Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Wands is, um, you know, the, the arrows of love, okay? In this situation, I feel like it's a, it, it's a situation where if you look at this ribbon, right? There's some passion here. There's some, there are some things that needs to be said. But the com conversation is like skirting, beating around the bush, you know? Um, communication that might not be as straightforward. Communication that is like all over the place. Um, you might be catching up with a person that you haven't seen in so long and you have so many things to talk about. You have so many questions that you want to ask them. They have so many questions that they want to ask you. And in the, the one hour conversation or however long you go for, you're touching on every single topic under the sun. So you're never going to miss your mark, okay? Either way, this is a really, really good card that indicates uh, a lot of communication touching on all topics but there is a thread a common thread that runs through all of these topics so you're not just talking to talk um, it's not just small talk it's not just like you know meaningless chatter and banter it's very substantive communication that will basically answer all of your questions okay so I feel like things are really heating up things are really um, well thought out okay this communication comes with a purpose and the longer you let the communication continue the more clearer you will be with the whole picture so the more information you will get okay so this is like really full meaningful communication 
Um, what I also have as well is um, we have here the Seven of Cups, and um, this is pretty much, you know, options. A lot of options in trying to figure out which option might be the best for the present time. And so I'm seeing here, I'm seeing here, many of you have kind of like emerged from this tunnel, okay? You're emerging from this tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, everything is like opening up, okay? So, so what felt very small and confining, it's gonna start to open up to all of these options. So basically what that means is, you know, the possibilities are endless. I can do anything. I'm, I have like a clean slate and I can, you know, write down, draw and manifest the future that I want. So once again, you're in manifestation mode. And this is why I mentioned before that there's a lot of uh, spiritual powers working behind the scenes to kind of push you towards the, the end of that tunnel. It might feel a little bit rushed, okay? You know how when you're in a tunnel and it's really windy outside and God forbid if the wind catches, like like goes into that tunnel, the tunnel is so windy, right? Because all the, the, the wind is rushing through it. So it can feel very rushed is what I'm sensing. And with this Ace of Wands energy, this is very fast, swift moving energy corroborated by this eight of uh, wands this is like swift communication you're going to need to make very fast decisions you're going to need to make you're gonna feel like you're being pulled ahead when you haven't finished whatever you need to do in the present you're gonna feel like oh I need to get all of this done but life is pulling you in a different direction so it can feel a little bit uncomfortable for a Virgo but I, I, I do sense that you know all of these things are happening because you're being prepared or propelled into a um, much bigger you know it's like no longer a small fish a uh, big fish in a small pond now you're gonna be swimming with the regular fish in a bigger pond okay where there's enough resources where there's enough room where there's enough open space for everybody where things make sense all right so I'm going to leave it at that I feel like it's very much the continuation of um, last month and I just want to say, and I mentioned this with Capricorn, um, I was trying to, you know, pinpoint like what are, is the main energy that you need to be careful about when it comes to this Mercury retrograde period. Um, I, I was going through all the signs, okay, so what do you need to know? Uh, the month of November is, the entire month is the Mercury retrograde period and, and that starts on October 31st and Halloween, the end of this month. Going into all of November, we're going to be through the majority of it is, is going to be the Mercury retrograde period, which is like for three weeks. And then we also have like the week and a half shadow period afterwards. So the month of November is all Mercury retrograde. And with Mercury as your ruling planet, what it does is that, you know, the usual uh, communication goes awry, technology falls apart. We have to um, depend on ourselves, our ability to recall information our instinct our in intuition okay we have to rely on our intuition and uh, mercury retrograde for you guys is um i feel what's happening is uh, you're relying you're going to be relying so much on your intuition this month because the way people approach you and the way that they talk to you, everything feels very subliminal. They're saying one thing, but deep down, they mean another. So you're, you're like using your third eye, you're using your intuition to kind of like cut through the communication and to understand the subtext. Somebody might be telling you, you know, like, uh, oh, you're such a good worker. When in fact, they're kind of like eyeing, you know, kind of like, how did you get your work done? Did you stay late? How is this person so perfect? Are they trying to get a, a promotion? You know, like, like you're going to understand, you're, you're going to be able to see, feel, and hear all the subliminal messages coming through from other people. 
Okay, and you're going to really understand how fe people feel about you. And in some situations, it can be very good when the people in our environment are very sincere, good-hearted people that want us to succeed. In other contexts, it can feel very um, disheartening if we're around people who are, you know, envious or jealous and things like that. So the people you surround yourself with, you know, keep good company. Okay, keep keep good company. Um, I'm I'm just getting the energy of I'm not here to please. Okay, I'm not here to please anybody. And I feel like you should keep that as your mantra for this month. You know, do your own thing. Um, think outside the box. Um, do whatever feels good for you. And never mind what other people are doing, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, okay, Virgos, I hope the reading finds you well. And I hope that um, you guys are able to get this in September so that we can prepare for this um, Mercury retrograde period. But either way, um, I will be back next month for your December reading. And if I have time at the end of the year, I'll try to do like a 2020 reading, okay, for the year 2020. Um, for those of you who are have still been emailing me, um, I do have a link in the description box for a psychic. Her name is Bridget. She is amazing. I can't speak for her enough. Um, she's based out of California, so if you are looking for a reader, if you're interested in a reading for yourself or for anybody that you know who might need spiritual guidance, I recommend you get a reading with her. Also, these are the, um, what is the name? The White Sage Tarot. And um, the artist that um, created this deck, she reached out to me, and I'm so happy she did because I had no idea that it was a small company. I thought it was all, you know, all the cards were like published by US Games. Um, I've also included a link in the description box for her website if you're interested in purchasing a deck for yourself or for, you know, uh, or to peruse a rep website for other services, um, please feel free, click on that link, um, support your local artists, okay? So I will leave it at that and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care of yourself.